Okay. We will be going live in five, four, three, two, one. We're live. Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. It is currently 8 a.m. like normal. It, it, <coughs> excuse me. It's 69 degrees outside with a high of 85 today. It'll probably feel a little hotter than 85. It felt hotter than like 67 when I was running to the gym this morning. So it is going to be warm and muggy out. So just be prepared for that. Uh, traffic conditions going to Tulsa? Fair. There's really no traffic issues. So if you are, however, you have not started your commute into Tulsa and you plan on going, you're not going to have any issues. So 169 Tulsa? is all cleared up for you. So with that being said, uh, there's really no change in the calendars as far as local events goes. So we're just going to dive right into our primary topic today of uh, news. And Chad, if you can pull up that video, this is. Uh, you got it. So the title of our uh, show today is The Type of Men Your Government Wants. And this is not America, this is Canada, but I mean, I to me, this is exactly what they want here, too. I mean, especially Democrats, you know, this is the type of mentality, the type of culture that they want to cultivate in our country. So uh, play this video, Chad, and uh, if you can, get rid of that uh, lower third. It's already third. gone. Oh, perfect, yeah. And then uh, Joe, go ahead and play this, and we'll uh, everyone can kind of we'll catch you on the tail end. People having their houses broken into because thieves are trying to take their key fobs to steal their cars is that you should just leave the fob near your door so that they don't need to break in. Check this out. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door. Because they're breaking into your home to steal your car they're, they don't want anything else a lot of them that they're arresting have guns on them and they're not toy guns they're real guns now this has got me thinking is it rude if i don't leave the gas tank half full too so the toronto police's latest solution to people having their houses broken into because the okay if that's not shocking or the most shocking thing you've ever seen i, I mean i don't know what world you're living in that's astounding that they're having a public service announcement by the police or a town square, whatever you will call that, of having that type of conversation with the public. I mean, that's a step away from a uh, SA or sexual assault person coming into your home and you, the husband, being like, well, hell, I'll hold my wife down for you. That's the next step in this. They don't want to hurt you. They just want to get their rocks off with your lady. That's that's what this is going to become. I mean, that's what it already is. Leave your keys by the door so the criminals can just, you know, kick the door in, grab them, and walk out. Yep. Seems to me that we're catering to criminals now is what the government's doing. Mm -hmm. And in that case, this Canadian police force. I mean, but you can say it's the similar things are happening in the United States with catch and release regarding illegal immigration, <laughs> with uh, them getting rid of all the misdemeanors. I mean, the, there's a reason why all the Kias and, Honda, and Hondas are all being broken into because it's being broken into by kids and they're not being arrested for it. They're being like, slap on the wrist, no charges, get out of here. And then yeah. they go do it again. If there's no repercussions, what's the point of... What's the point of police if there are no repercussions for your actions? And let's look at it from a – so let's say you agree with the philosophy. Well, they're not – if they don't want to hurt you, they just want your car, just let them take it. Look here. If the criminals steal your car, you're going to have to file a claim. And if you file a claim, your insurance is going to go up. And not just your insurance. Everybody who's in that same book of business that you're in, their insurance is going to go up too. The zip code you live in, all the companies are going to go, wow, there's a massive amount of break-ins in this area. It's going to affect prices everywhere. All around the board. Everyone will suffer because of this. Not just the victims. Everybody who's insured and does the right things to keep themselves properly protected. You all suffer. And morons who are lefties go it's fine that's what insurance is for no you're just you're hurting everyone else because you think everyone else can afford it you're like oh well, the criminals they're not they don't want to hurt people they just want to they just want to make a living and feed their family it's it's an actual justice where he's a youtuber i really like to watch 
he talks about the Aladdin principle. He goes, oh, there's no such thing as a bad criminal. They're all just Aladdins. They're stealing just the stuff they need. <laughs> there's that great, oh, I, you know what you should pull up? What? Is that uh, that scene from uh, It's Always Sunny where they're talking about the difference between looting oh, and rioting. Yeah. Okay. See if, I can, see if you can that. find that real quick. But, uh, yeah, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the decriminalization of criminality. Again, you cannot assume people who are robbing you are just doing so to feed themselves and feed their family. A lot of these people are repeat, like, the vast majority of criminals are repeat offenders. And they're not repeat offenders because they're desperate at the end of the ropes. They're repeat offenders because it's what they're good at. And they don't want to do an honest day's work because they know they can make more money stealing from you. And now you have a government encouraging people to not take action. In fact, not just, not only not take action, but facilitate and make things easier for the criminals to rob you, to hurt you financially. And eventually, I know that that analogy I gave earlier, it's like, well, the next thing they're going to ask you to do is hold down your wife. That will be a thing. I mean, remember, that was in Philadelphia where that chick got... Uh, got uh, violently uh, had violent in, you know I there's rules on what you can and can't say on YouTube and Facebook but uh, I think you all get where I'm going with this she had unwilling intercourse with a assailant on the train and nobody intervened on her behalf people just filmed it they said well we, we have the footage we'll be able to arrest him but uh, you know have fun down there lady this is the society we're... Now, so again, this hap that happened in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. This is the society we are cultivating. You know, and, and that poor guy, uh, what was the, the, the Marine's name that... Uh, oh. I can't think of his name right now. I'll think of it. I'll, I'll look it up. It, 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 irrelevant. In New York, there was a former Marine who stopped a guy from harassing and beating up and assaulting women on the, the subway. And he put him in a chokehold, and the guy died. Now he's being criminally prosecuted. So, they're like, New York. It's like, I stepped in and tried to help people. Shame on you for trying to do what's right. We're going to prosecute you for this. And I, I the title of our video that we made about that was New York Hates Veterans. And I can't tell you. How many. many people from New York came in and gave us hate for that? They go, yeah, we all hate veterans in New York. I go, well, you're prosecuting them. Daniel Penny. Daniel Penny. Daniel Penny is the Marine that's being prosecuted for the uh, intervening and saving people on a subway in New York. But this is the society we're cultivating. We don't, we're going to punish heroes like Daniel Penny for intervening and, acts and, and killing somebody by, sa by saving others. Killing one to save others. The guy was violently threatening people. And he was like, and Daniel Penny was like, not on my watch. Former Marine. Guy going to school up in New York. And now he's sitting in a jail cell waiting to be prosecuted. Sentenced to prison. They go, well, you shouldn't have done that. That's the, that's the police job. I mean, I know there were no police there, but I mean, again, just pull out your phone and film it. You, we'll have the evidence, you know. Again, the police are not crime stoppers. They're crime solvers. They solve the crime after it's done. Can the police prevent crime? Yes. They're presence in areas, but they can't be everywhere at once. I have It's Always Sunny pulled up. Okay, yeah. So let's that. uh let's uh, sh sh show this uh, It's Always Sunny clip. This kind of this right here kind of <laughs> sums up the modern philosophy of well, at least Danny DeVito's character sums up what I think the Democrats think. <laughs> Do you remember years ago there was a storm in New Orleans? Hurricane Katrina? Yes. Yeah, I remember it. Okay, mm -hmm. check this out. What do you think those people are doing? Surviving or looting? They're surviving. Ah. Okay, do you remember a man named Rodney King? Yes, of course Okay, I the LAPD worked him over really good. Yes. Okay, this was taken during the Rodney King riots. What do you think these people are doing? Looting or surviving? 
people they're looting. Ah, of course. Well, it's the media, see? When it's white people, it's survival, and when it's black people, it's looting. No, Frank, it's because the white people are stealing bread, and the black people are stealing speakers. If the white people were stealing stereo equipment, I would say they were looting, too. How do you know the blacks don't have bread and no speakers? What are you talking about? No, okay, what are we talking wait, about listen, right listen, now? There are listen, big listen. things to do. Okay, calm down. Well, this is the best part. <laughs> <More>? <laughs> Uh, that, that right there, the way she reacted is how we feel, like, it's how you should feel about that police video about Toronto. It's about how you should feel about Daniel Penny. What are we talking about right now? The guy saved people. The police are asking you in Toronto, the people of Canada, to leave your keys by the door for the criminals, just like Santa stopping by to drop presents off, except it's the opposite Santa. Thanks, of, thanks for leaving your keys by the door. Again, how far are we from, you know... Well, when a criminal comes in, you know, we're just going to ask the husbands to hold down his wife so, uh, you know, the criminals can get their rocks off and enjoy their day and get on. Because they don't want to hurt you. They don't want to hurt you. They're just looking to have fun. They're just looking to have a good time. What are we talking about here? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can think that's a fair assessment or not, but look at what's happening in our society right now. Look what happened to Kyle Rittenhouse. The kid defended himself. Whether or not you think he should have been walking around with a gun in public is irrelevant. You are allowed to carry a rifle in public in, the, in America. Second Amendment. People came up to him, attacked him. People were... Ch why would you chase an armed suspect down the street if you were trying to do the right things? Like, why, why would you chase somebody who's running away from you with a rifle? That's what happened. They were attacking him. He shot one guy who attacked him. He was he left the situation, ran away to go turn himself in, and guess what? Other people came up, attacked him. One guy pulled a gun on him, and he defended himself again. We are prosecuting the wrong people now. And we are protecting criminals. Scary, scary stuff. But yeah. We'll uh, push on to the next uh, subject now, which is a little bit more lighthearted. But uh, Trump went to uh, the last UFC fights. Uh, Sean Strickland was fighting there, and Sean Strickland's a really funny, good fighter. And uh, But uh, what was interesting was the, how the media portrayed this. So, I mean, Trump showed up. People love Trump especially people who are in the fighting community and people who go to UFC. and I mean, like I said, NASCAR football events, I mean, he just gets universal praise, universal love, essentially. So he shows up, and uh, everybody's reaching out. Everybody's trying to shake his hands. Celebrities, other wealthy folks, people who are on the front of the ring, they're all shaking his hands. Well, Aaron Rodgers is there. And the media reported, have you got the, uh, the, Aaron, the Washington Times pulled up? I do. I can pull it up. That I've got. That's uh, yeah. This one. Yep, the Washington Times one. So if you can pull that screen over. So the Washington Times said that Aaron Rodgers conspicuously. Uh, oh my goodness! Always this. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Rodgers conspicuously passes on shaking Trump's hand at UFC event. This is very very funny because this article is up. It was written three days ago, and there is and the Washington Times. The Washington Times has this article. It's still up. There's no fact check on this. Well, guess what? Pull up the next articles, Chad. You got it. I said, well, here, on the side over here, I actually have it pulled up. If you look, the first few articles. Did Jets uh, quarterback Aaron Rodgers ignore Trump? Aaron Rodgers snubbed Trump goes viral. Snubbed Trump goes viral. Aaron Rodgers shares, and then... You know, here's one that's actually correct. Aaron Rodgers shares handshake after, you know, photo op. Aaron Rodgers with Trump last night. Uh, say cheese. Aaron Rodgers ignores Donald Trump at UFC 30302, you know, 302. Well, Aaron Rodgers shakes felon's hand, posted on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the next one we're going to pull up. The, so not only is that article at, with, at the Washington Times a lie, Aaron Rodgers did shake Donald Trump's hand. There's video evidence of Aaron Rodgers shaking his hand. Aaron Rodgers is a famous celebrity. He's not going to... There's tons of people when Trump walks in. like So they're saying he didn't get up and shake his hand when he first walked in. It's because everyone was trying to do that. Aaron Rodgers is a celebrity himself. He's just going to sit there and wait. And if Donald Trump makes his way over, he stood up, shook his hand. He did. 
Aaron Rodgers shook Trump's hand while he was there. Posted online. Was really happy about it, too. The tweet was really positive, or the X post. I'll pull up that X post. But too. the media has to portray this as negatively as possible. What they're trying to do is make Trump not cool. And that's a problem. The media cannot make Trump not cool. People love the guy. Like, and that's the point. Like, the, you, the media is full of losers. People that nobody, like, again, Don Lemon got fired from CNN. He has a YouTube channel. He gets like 12,000 views per video. That's pathetic for someone who was paid as much as he was at CNN for being one of, at one of CNN's top anchors, got paid millions. Now he's getting paid. I mean, th that's what they call, I mean, you wouldn't even be making money with the kind of views he gets on YouTube. That's because nobody actually cares about Don Lemon. They're all losers. The only reason they were relevant was because of the platform of CNN, not because of themselves. So, yeah, it, it's just astounding that they're trying to, that, that they're, again, they openly lie about everything in the media. It's like, oh yeah, he didn't shake his hand, he snubbed him. I mean, there's no fact check on that. There's no Reuters fact check false. Donald Trump did shake, but, but here's what the fact check will be. The fact checkers will say, fact check true, he did not shake Donald Trump's hand. Right away. Right away. But eventually, you know, on you know the very bottom of like addendum, he did shake Donald Trump's hand at some point that night, and they did have friendly conversations. But he, again, that's that's the level for fact checkers now. So whenever you get that, those uh, again, even on Facebook, I made a fa Facebook post the other day. It was that James Lindsay post that we talked about. The all the Democrats voted yes to allow legal immigrants to vote. I got a fact check false on that on my Facebook page. It goes to show you how biased Facebook still is. I mean, that's true. That actually happened. I was on C-SPAN. That was a C-SPAN picture, and it showed the votes in the House. But it was going, context needed. For what? Pathetic, man. Yeah, but, but if you're looking at this, I mean, literally, on the side over here, Aaron Rodgers snubs Donald Trump. Did Aaron Rodgers shake Donald Trump's hand? You know, yeah. Aaron Rodgers shakes Felon's hand. Like, and then I have the picture pulled up right here, as you can see. He's there it is. He's shaking, shaking his hand. Donald Trump's hand. So the media is lying. What is the, what's the caption on the video, too? Uh, right here? Yeah. What does that say? Pick with President Trump, Aaron Rodgers, 12. There you go. I mean, what more do you need that the media is lying to you every day about everything? If you only passively consume the news, you will believe the stuff you see in the headlines. And that's what they want. The media wants you to be a headline skimmer. You're the, like, if you are a passive headline skimmer, and you're the type of person that's going to listen to that Toronto PSA, you are exactly the type of man the government wants. You are a sheep that can be led anywhere. Don't be that person. Yeah. Well, and, and the government does want you to be that way. I mean... We were listening to uh, the, it was Tim Pool, but he was talking about when he lived in New Jersey. You have a duty to flee if someone breaks into your home in New Jersey. A duty to flee. Your home is your safe is your sanctuary, your final safe space. So you're supposed to, if someone breaks into your home, you're supposed to leave your home and allow the criminal to just take whatever they want. You can't defend yourself. Democrat policies always tend to lead to giving the criminal what they want and then you having to just take it. Again, it will eventually be written in policy. If a sexually deviant criminal breaks into your house, it will be your husband's responsibility to hold the wife down for the criminal. <laughs> That's what it's going to turn into. I mean, we're not far off from that, people. But uh, back on subject here, you know, that's what they have to do. They have to make Trump not cool. They have to make Trump not cool. And you know what? You, it, that is impossible. You cannot make Trump not cool. Watch, pull up the next videos of why they have to, why they have to lie about this. Look at, look at, what, look at what happens after the fights. Oh, you're talking about the right yes, jump that, defense? Yes, right yeah. there, yeah. All right, pulling it up right now. Play it.
Look at that. That man won a fight. And the first thing he does after he wins the fight is jump out of the ring to shake Donald Trump's hand. Donald Trump and Dana White right after that. That is cool. It's culturally cool. It's this kind of stuff that the, the media doesn't want to report on that. Because that's cool. You want that to be seen. Like you want, you don't want someone you despise to be seen in public with winners. You don't want, so that's why the Democrats have had a monopoly on being cool forever. Because they have all the Hollywood celebrities in their pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reason why that Democrats can't really get and keep, uh, Athletes, athletes, yeah, and well, rappers you know, I, too now. Well, apparently, well, I was gonna say not not nearly as much as rappers, but the reason why they can't keep athletes is because Democrats advocate for equal, equity, equity, equity policies. There is no equity in sports. If equity was in sports, you know the Michael five, Jordan wouldn't yeah, have been the goat. Exactly, the five foot five, you know, white kid <laughs> down the street would be playing in the NBA. Yeah, all the Asians would be playing in the NBA. <laughs> All the Jewish kids would be playing in the NBA. Yeah, it's there is no equity in sports. You can't have equity in athletics. It doesn't exist. Only excellence exists in athletics. The cream rises to the top. And that's the thing. These guys are at the top of their game. They know that Trump's policies and, and Trump's getting railroaded, especially with everything going on. That's A lot of rappers are turning in Trump's side. Man, Donald Trump's being treated like we do. They're turning in. I mean, the culture's shifting, and I hope it stays shifted, and I hope that uh, Trump— But again, I mean, just Biden is destroying the country. He's trying to—you know, I think Biden and the Democrats know they're losing, so they're trying to destroy the country as quickly as they can, so Trump inherits an unsolvable mess. I mean, two million people coming over the border in the last, what, four years? Yep. Every year, two million people? Yep. I would say so. That sounds right. I mean, that's an unsolvable problem right there. Even if we put up the border fence, we still have to deal with these additional, what, 12 million people that have crossed the border in the last four years? If we deported a thousand, day, a thousand a day, I heard it would take 20 years to get rid of all the illegal immigrants. A thousand a day. So, yeah. That's why the media lies. They have to make that not cool. They have to make Donald Trump not cool. They have to start saying felon, felon, convicted felon. They're going to use all those buzzwords to try to keep him as uncool as possible. But it's just, it's, it's not going to work. The guy is a legend. Mm -hmm. People love him. So... I think there's a big shift happening right now, and I mean, everything they've done is backfired. Trump raised, after they convicted him, he raised like, what, $400 million in a weekend? Something like That's that. That's unprecedented. Like he raised $70 million or something no, like that. No, $400 million. 400 million. It's million. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's unprecedented. Oh, it was $70 million in a day and then $400 million over the weekend. That's yeah. right, yeah. That sounds, that sounds absolutely correct now. Yeah. I mean, th there's no getting around it. The guy's cool. His conviction made him cooler. Yeah. And people just, well, they want to be around him. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that. That's about all we've got for you on those subjects. What else we got? Okay, so we'll kind of end with this uh, because I saw this and, you know, <laughs> listen to all, so we're going to pull up this video and just Look at all these chicks and their useless degrees they're going to name off. Like, I don't know. Just play the video and we'll catch you on the tail end. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Hi, my name's Nikki. I'm studying Latin American women and visual culture. Yeah. Hi, I'm Melanie. I'm studying the unseen body and creative spaces of erasure and exposure of the queer. Yeah. Hey, I'm Nina and I studied the arts, education, and social justice. Yeah. I'm Joyce. I studied decolonial intimacies. Yeah! I'm Victoria and I study remembering or forgetting, uh, navigating international conflict through collective memory. Yeah! Hi, I'm Yvonne and I study monstrosity, the subaltern practice. Or should I say I created it? Yeah! She created it. Hi, I'm Nunyala. I'm studying living artfully, art as ritual therapy, and passion.
The decoloniality. Hi, my name's Nikki. I'm studying Latin American women. What in are those? What where can you what job can you get with those? What 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 useful thing can you possibly do with any of those degrees that they just listed off right there besides be a teacher? Uh, coming to your local HR department. <laughs> no. Or, again, yeah, but that, that's what they'll be. They, they will write dissertation papers, they will create a new field of study, and then they will go to college and they will teach that retarded new field of study. And then they will indoctrinate the next generation of useful idiots. I mean, did anybody even catch... I mean... The, the, the words they used were made up. I mean, I guess all words are technically made up, but... I mean, the fact that they're taken seriously in an academic environment is ridiculous. I mean, the, I wouldn't take these people seriously at a daycare. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I mean, they all basically look the same, too. They're all out of shape. Diversity people. <laughs> They're all going to be bitter old ladies one day with cats. But yeah, I mean, this is this is the future of education right here, everyone. These women will be in their own creative departments at colleges one day very soon. Teaching your children. Teach, yeah, teaching the next generation. About... A field of study that they just made up they that doesn't benefit no, society. Yeah. And again, what do any of those uh, teaching or degrees, what, how do they benefit society? How are they going to benefit them other than something to put on their resume for trying to apply the job out of college? Like, I mean, literally, I mean, they don't have to produce anything. What they're going to produce is biased studies that prove their worldviews. I mean, James Lindsay went and did all this and submitted all those uh, fake academic research papers as a joke, and all of them got accepted. And he was astounded that he could get any of them accepted. He was like, the, the college peer review program is dead. So, yeah, it's uh, the... This is proof that the college degree is basically meaningless unless you're in a STEM field. Yep. I'd be embarrassed if they read what my degree was. I mean, it's I'm pseudo embarrassed that they, you know I was a film major, but the fact that these chicks are just proud as can be that uh, they they're in these fields and they, I mean you know they're gonna walk across the stage and be those ones going whoop. I graduated in a useless field, but to me, it's the most important field ever. I'm going to be a dependent on your tax dollars for the rest of my life. So yeah, all these chicks got their degree in underwater basket weaving, and they'll be teaching underwater basket weaving at the university. And like I said, we, I, you guys, I'm saying this is a joke, but it's not a joke because these, these women are actually going to go in and start teaching at universities. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in the next five years, but eventually they will get in, they will be tenured, and they will be indoctrinating the next generation. And this will be a problem for my kids and, you know, future generations. Yeah. These, the only three places they're going to be able to get jobs are at is elementary school teachers, which these will be those diversity, you know, Pray to the gay flag mm -hmm. people. They'll be college, or they'll be college professors, mm -hmm. or they're going to be working in some sort of human resources department at mm -hmm. a big company. Setting policies, that we, yeah, yeah. Setting policies that will be demanded that they people have to attend, so that way they can justify their, you know, salaries. Yeah, you haven't sat in on your DEI and racial equity and inclusion training, so you're no longer eligible to work at our corporation. Again, you you didn't uh, sign up for your racial and inclusion training for your college classes yet next semester, so you're not eligible to enroll in college for next semester. You're you're out of compliance with university guidelines.
Shame on you. How dare you not do your racial exercise? How dare you not do your mandatory sexual assault training as well? I mean, we all know you young males are all just little SA assaulters walking around campus. Potential predators. You're just predators looking for your next victim everywhere you go. It's like, I'm just trying to go to the, the calf. Yeah, to find your next victim. You oppressive men. Like, that is uh, such a terrible mentality to teach. Such a ridiculous policy to have at a college. Just assume that all men are going to come in and be predators. So, that's about all we've got for you today. Uh, just kind of showing you the what the future looks like <laughs> there with that last video. But that's all we've got. This is the Twins with Owasso Live. This was The Morning Loop. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. We're trying to grow this channel and get the word out and spread the word and keep everybody on the same page about what's going on in the world so that's all we've got for you this is uh this is the morning loop and we are signing off god bless y'all see you later everybody